So in this sketch, we're going to try to make the connection between uh, the motion of a point and its velocity vector. And we do this uh, by starting first with just the motion of a simple point. So you can choose to animate fast or slow, it doesn't matter. Um, and first ask just basically how far does the point travel here. And so show the, show the answer, it'll show the total units, and then describe the motion. So we're asking students to describe that motion. And the hope is that uh, at the very least, they just it, say it goes back and forth and it's periodic. And then next we try to have the student describe the speed of the point, like where it's fastest, where it's slowest. And hopefully they'll be able to figure out that uh, the point is fastest when it's going through the middle, regardless of the direction, and it's slowest at the end. So it starts at the end, speeds up, then it goes to the middle, slows down, and stops, turns around. So once we've done that, we go to the next page and we ask a slightly different question. So we're going to start the animation again. And so we had talked about the motion in the previous one and we talked about that it goes faster in the middle and slower on the ends. And now we can talk about the direction and talk about what that um, velocity vector might look like. So if it goes from A to G, the direction of the velocity vector should be to the right. And then if we go uh, from the magnitude, the magnitude should start out at zero, should get bigger, and then end up at zero. And so that's what we should see. And then we can actually get a, uh, the same idea uh, as we go the other way, when we go back to A from G. And we should see a similar answer. And then we can then actually show that. So there's the velocity vector to match that velocity motion. Um, and then so once we've got an idea of that moving, changing velocity vector, we can go to the next page and make this a little bit more complex. So here, uh, when we start the animation, we've added in a second point and its velocity vector. So uh, it should have the same sort of properties as the previous one and we asked the students to describe the motion. Uh, except that it's up and down. And then we have them start to describe what's happening to each point in relation to the other point, so red and purple point. So uh, as the purple point is moving, you know, they seem to be moving in opposite direction or opposite to each other, where one's in the middle, the other's at the end, and so on. And then, um, so we have them do that at very specific points. And then hopefully what we're going to do is ask them to try to bring those two motions together. So right now these are separate motions from each other. They have some connection to them based on these previous um, questions that we've asked. And now we're going to go to the next page to bring that idea together. So if we start the animation, um, it looks exactly like we ended up in the previous one. Uh, and the question will be, now that we have these two velocity vectors, so the one for the purple point here and the one for the red point here, and if we just take the sum of those two vectors, the vector sum, what would that vector sum look like? So we ask them to think about that first and then click on show the resultant velocity. And hopefully they're surprised to find out that that just becomes a single vector of uniform length that is just sweeping around a circle. Um, and so we can have that sort of described as the magnitude staying uh, constant while the direction rotates around a common point. And so the, the further question is, you know, what would the motion of this point be that is the combination of these two points? So if we combine these two velocities and these two motions of these two points, what's that going to look like? Um, and they click on the next page to see that when they start that animation, uh, that just becomes motion around a circle. And you can match up the vertical velocity and direction uh, with the purple point and the horizontal velocity and direction with the red point and show that that velocity vector just is tangential to the circle as you go around in a uniform velocity, a uniform speed around that circle. So really trying to come to the idea that you know any particular complex motion in this case motion around a circle in two dimensions can be broken up into simpler 
motions in one direction. In this case, one direction uh, along the horizontal axis and one direction along the vertical axis.